Hello, everyone. Welcome to Caterpillar's third quarter 2021 financial results with our chief financial officer, Andrew Bonfield. I'm Rusty Dunn. Andrew, great to see you. How are you? I'm really good, Rusty. Unfortunately, we're back to virtual, but hopefully we'll be together again in person soon. One of these days. Well, we do look forward to that time. But for now, the third quarter is in the books. We're going to take I know you'll take us through the numbers, but first, maybe some opening thoughts on how you would characterize the third quarter for us. Yeah, the third quarter was a really strong quarter and really impressed with the way everybody has kept focus, even with the challenges which are well publicized out there around supply chain difficulties, freight and so forth. Demand remains very strong for our products and our focus of our teams on delivering product to customer has been outstanding again. And at the same time, obviously, keeping focus on that safety, particularly in light of the environment that we're all working in at the moment. Well, take us through some of those key numbers, Andrew, starting with sales and revenues. Sales and revenues were up 25% to $12.4 billion versus $9.9 billion a year ago. Strong performance against across all three primary segments and across all the regions around the world in which we operate. Overall, really good performance driven by strong sales of uh, original equipment, which were up 14% in end user terms for the quarter. Also, good performance from services as well as favorable price and also foreign exchange uh, giving a benefit to, to the overall top line. From top line to the bottom line, how about profit per share? Adjusted profit per share was $2.66, which is up 75% versus the prior year, $1.52. On a profit per share basis, $2.60 versus $1.22 last year. Very strong performance, pulling through and reflecting uh, overall that volume that we generated uh, this quarter, plus improving margins year over year. And at the same time, a slightly lower tax rate also helped profitability for the quarter. And you always make like to make a couple of points about the balance sheet cash deployment, cash on hand. What do you have to say there, Andrew? Free cash flow for the quarter was just over $800 million. Uh, that brings year to date to $4.2 billion. Very strong cash performance, very strong cash balance. $9.4 billion sitting on the balance sheet at the end of the quarter. And at the same time, we've returned another $2 billion to shareholders this quarter. So strong balance sheet, which helps over, overall give our returns to our shareholders. A strong quarter for sure. So key takeaways for people uh, from these last three months. Well, just thank you for all the hard work everybody's doing out there. We know it's uh, very difficult. People are having to work out a process, normal process, in order to get machines delivered to customers. They're doing it. They're doing a great job. And meeting that end user demand is really important. Um, that, that has really been fantastic. And at the same time, you know, quality has remained a, a key forefront and safety also, and our safety performance has also been very good year to date. Keep that up, please. Absolutely. And something we always like to do every quarter when we get together is to go beyond the numbers for just a second. I know you had a chance, Andrew, to talk recently with Energy and Transportation Group President Joe Creed around the things we're doing with environmental, social and governance efforts, ESG efforts, and some of the strategic activity around E&T specifically. Let's watch. Hello, everybody. Uh, today, I'm joined by Joe Creed, who's our group president for energy and transportation. You may recall Joe actually on the other side of the camera doing this role a couple of years ago when he was interim CFO. Joe, welcome to Beyond the Numbers. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. It's exciting to be on the other side of the interview here. That's good. Joe, uh, ESG is playing a big role uh, in some of the things you're doing strategically uh, within energy and transportation. Uh, obviously, the recent acquisition of SPM uh, with the EFRAC trailer, uh, but we've also had an interesting little acquisition uh, that we completed recently around carbon point solutions. Perhaps you can tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, thanks. It's it's an exciting uh, smaller acquisition that we made, and as as you say, Andrew, you know, over the last especially six to eight months, customers have really been focused on ESG issues and how we can support them to help them lower their carbon intensity. So Carbon Point Solutions is a small uh, acquisition. It's headquartered in Rhode Island. Uh, it's a carbon capture patented technology uh, that really differs from other carbon capture technology that's been around for a long time. So um, carbon capture technology is more widespread on a large scale standpoint and in this particular technology is um, 
tailored to less than 25 megawatt solutions and distributed generation. So if you think about solar turbines, you think about our Caterpillar uh, equipment portfolio, uh, Carbon Point Solutions really fits in nicely with us. So this is for more small applications. Does it fit into any other of the other segments or division? We'll see. And the first place we'll be deployed is with solar and, and our power gen sets in oil and gas in particular with the carbon that's captured and it's compressed and it's either used so enhanced oil recovery so customers will inject it back into the well uh, to help them with oil recovery or as i mentioned all the pipelines for co2 uh, a lot of our our engines are running close to that that infrastructure so we can get it uh, moved out through that pipeline infrastructure yeah, and so, I mean, this obviously helps the customer meet their ESG goals, which obviously are becoming more important for them as they look forward. Like I said, every little bit helps. Uh, and the, the neat thing about this technology as well is it can, it we will be uh, going out with, you know, new new projects that we bid, but it can also be retrofitted to uh, engines uh, in gas compression, oil and gas, power generation that are in the field as well. So um, we think it'll be, you know, a, a nice addition to our portfolio and really help our customers. Yeah, and I mean, obviously what you see within energy and transportation is a number of, uh, of, of small acquisitions or things we're trying to do to help customers on their ESG journey. Um, I think uh, obviously, uh, this has become something which has become increasingly important for them as well, isn't it? It sure is. And and no two customers are the same. And, you know, supporting our machine uh, teams and, and divisions as well as our external customers. Uh, you know, we're going to have all kinds of different technologies we're going to have to invest in. And um, this is one of them that helps through the transition. Um, obviously, battery electric, hydrogen, you've seen some announcements we've made. Um, so we're, we're pretty excited. Um, the energy transition, you know, presents a lot of opportunities for us to support our customers and, and you know, these smaller acquisitions to add to the portfolio really just enhance our ability to do that. Uh, it's all part of the way I think, uh, you know, Caterpillar and particularly you guys in energy and transportation are trying to work very closely with your customers to actually get them ready for to, to achieve their sustainability goals, which are becoming obviously a high level of focus everywhere around the world. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to have to do this with our customers um, and, and we'll be there to support them. And um, like I said, they all they all have a little bit different challenge, but uh, we have a great portfolio of technology and great people. Um, and so so we'll take this journey with them. Great, Joe. Thank you very much. Really appreciate your time today and uh, best of luck on this journey and helping our customers meet their goals. Thanks. Happy to be here. Andrew, great conversation with Joe, something we're going to be talking about as we go forward, uh, ESG. ESG is a very hot topic at the moment, uh, a lot of customer interest in that. And actually, you know, the focus of the organization is actually helping meet those customer needs. Andrew, as always, great to see you. And we'll do this again soon, as you said, perhaps in the same room next time. In the meantime, have a great rest of the year. Yes, you too, Rusty. And we've obviously got the fourth quarter. We'll be back in January for the full year results. And again, hopefully that will be in person. And we appreciate all of you watching. Stay safe. Take care. See you soon.